Hey, what's going on guys? I was going to do a uh, tutorial on how to use Qt Creator with the Ross workspace that we have. Um, so, uh, first things first, um, if you install Ross with the script I gave you or if you just use the uh, Ross desktop full install from their website, uh, the first thing you got to do is say remove, is remove the version of Qt Creator that they installed from the Ubuntu repositories because um, uh, I like to use the one that's from uh, the actual website itself. So to do that, you say sudo um, apt-get purge qt creator and then you'll see that um, it's not installed because I've already done this, but uh, if it is installed, it might ask you, you know, are you sure, and you say yes. Um, and then you're going to go to, you're going to Google search for Qt Creator. And if you go to their download page, it'll give you the option of getting the commercial or open source version. Just uh, select to go to open source, and it will automatically detect that you're on Linux and that you're getting the 64-bit version. And this works just like a Windows installer. Um, so if you download it, like you may have to, you may have to select it and say properties, permissions, allow executing as a program. You may have to do that before it'll uh, run. But once you do that and you click it, it'll ask you where you want to install it. Um, and so where I put it was uh, from my home folder. I created a folder called applications for stuff that I install with the binary installers. And then um, I just installed it uh, in here. And then um, that's gonna create, see here, if you go to the Qt folder tools, Qt creator bin, this right here is Qt creator. So that's the, that's the binary for it. And then you can say, you know, uh, make link and uh, I'm, I just did that it'll put it right here and then you just drag it over to your Ross workspace so I have a link to it here and it's just for convenience because I've already I've always got my terminals uh, in this directory and you have to launch Qt creator from the terminal um, the reason that is is because in the home folder uh, is your bash RC file and so whenever you open up a terminal it will uh, have all these exported uh, environment variables in the background so if you just click click on it from gnome shell or this uh, file browser it won't have any of these set so I haven't found a way around that yet so you just have to launch it from the terminal um, but before you do that you have to build the workspace with a cat can build and if you haven't uh, initialized the workspace you'll have to do that first so catkin init. So we've already done that. Um, catkin build. And then I'm not going to run that command because it's going to take a minute. Um, but if you've got to run that command and it needs to get all the way through uh, a build before you try to, try to do the uh, Qt creator. And so there's one more step you have to do before launching Qt Creator from this uh, terminal window. And it's a bit esoteric, but um, what you're going to want to do is in the ROS workspace where our source code is. These are all of our ROS packages. Um, we need to put another file here. And you get that from, uh, you got to browse to it from the root maybe yours says computer or something else but um, it's just your root hard drive and then you're gonna go to opt ROS kinetic then you're gonna go to and this is where all the raw stuff is um, and you may have to source this file if um, if it's if you don't have it sourced in your bash folder 
Uh, but you, then you go to share and you're going to look for the folder called Catkin. Then inside of this folder there's going to be a CMake folder. And inside of this folder at the very bottom, at least for me, is this file. This is what we're looking for. Top level dot CMake. And so here's the file path. And you're going to copy that to the Ross workspace source folder. And then you're going to rename this file. Um, all of these packages have a CMake list.txt file. So an uh, easy way to do it just be to go in one of these, hit rename, because you're going to rename it to this CMake list.txt. Copy. Rename, paste. And I know that seems like a really weird step, because it is. But um, so this is the actual file that you're going to open from Qt Creator as as the project file. And so, having built the workspace, um, purged the original version of Qt and installed it from the uh, the website. Um, what you're going to do is just launch it. Remember, I have that uh, I have that that link in the Ross workspace that links to that binary, and I'm just by launching it from this terminal, it'll inherit all those bash variables. And um, what you do is you go to File, Open Project, Open File or Project. And then you're gonna go to MindDev, Ross Workspace, you're gonna go to Source Folder, and you're gonna open that file that we just created. And you're gonna have some configuration options. Uh, yours may be different from mine. Uh, I, you just, just leave it at desktop and say configure project, and it's gonna fail. Uh, It does this every time. So every time you open the project, you're going to have to come over here and you're going to have to under CMake. For all of these uh, parameters, you're going to unset all of them. Unset, 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 unset. And that's it. Well, there's one more thing you got to do. Um, Go back to general messages, you'll see that it failed because of a uh, Mavlink, right? So uh, in the source folder, you have Mavros and Mavlink. You can actually delete these two if you don't want to mess with them because they do take a long time to build. Um, and when you're using Qt Creator, the first time you build, it, it, it has to rebuild these. Uh, so uh, you, you may you may just want to delete those, but it. Um, to get it to work, otherwise, um, when you go back to your projects tab over here, you're gonna see, um, and that's where I un un unset all the CMake stuff. Um, you you'll see that after we hit apply those changes, it's got all these other things, and what you're gonna do is find Catkin blacklist packages and just all lowercase type Mavlink. That's all uppercase, all lowercase Mavlink. And then just click apply. And now, when you go back to the general messages tab, you should see it go through the CMake folder. And what it's doing is it's uh, it crawling through all of our uh, source files, looking at all the includes, finding all of those on the system where they're installed, so that the autocomplete and all the uh, other stuff works. And so you should say see that it says configuration done, build files have been written to wherever. And then you'll see these are we got uh, one of these for all the packages. So like for metal detector, you have the main file right here and the class over here. And at this point all the autocomplete should work. But uh, before you do anything else, you're definitely going to want to come over here to projects and erase these build steps.
for the x and add a build step and you're going to select custom process step and then when the working directory comes up you're going to say browse ross workspace open the command is going to be catkin and the uh, arguments is going to be build and um, if you want to add a clean step so that you can clean it from here you can do that select Ross workspace and say cat can and you come down here and the arguments is clean dash y that just usually will ask you are you sure yes or no but uh, for it to work from the uh, from this right here you gotta put the y there and that's pretty much it uh, what you want to do is say file save all I'll go ahead and close this and if we go back to the source directory we'll see that uh, underneath that cmake list text file we created there's now a cmake list dot text dot user which uh, QT it saves all those uh, settings that we just set up as far as like our run configurations and stuff um, but when you open the file, when, when you open the workspace, you always select this cmakelist.txt file. And just to show you what it looks like when you go back. So, open file or project, mind uh, ROS workspace, source, open. See, it, it still fails. You have to always go over here and unset all the CMake stuff. I know it's kind of a pain, but uh, that's just the way it is. You'll see that it'll, it has saved our where we typed in Mavlink to blacklist that. So you don't have to do that again, but you do have to unset the CMake stuff. And then if you check your general messages, you'll see it go through. And then you'll, you'll, you'll have all your stuff back. So um, that's pretty much it. You know, if you hit Control B or you just go to Build All, and you go to your compile output down here, you'll see the uh, the progress. And uh, that should get Qt Creator up and working for you. Um, you'll see it auto completes includes and everything and so uh, it should make the development process a lot easier uh, it does for me anyways rather than working in a text editor but uh that's pretty much all you have to do to get it set up and it kind of it kind of is a chore the first time but um once you get it done once i mean you it takes like all five seconds to unset those CMake things, so it's not a big deal. And uh, it's definitely worth it. And as far as the run configurations, like I don't mess with those, or I don't ever launch anything from Qt Creator, because um, it, it's too touchy to do it. I mean, you can have scripts and things like that, but for the most part, uh, I launch everything from the launch files and stuff. And that's pretty much it. Appreciate y'all for watching.